Yesterday I saw this tweet by Michael Schirmer uh, where he is retweeting or quoting a, uh, a, uh, a video from, uh, from the Heritage Foundation. And the video, the, the, the tweet from the Heritage Foundation is actually a video of a feminist, an anti-sex feminist. Uh, and, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. But, but I want to show you the video. And then I want to show you kind of the responses to the video. First of all, the Heritage Foundation, what it had to write about it. And then the responses to it uh, following that. So let's watch. Let's watch this video. Um, Ah, move it a little bit, censor it a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, it's mainly for listening. It's the, 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 the picture's not that crucial. I, I hear from a great many young women who were put on the pill at the age of 14 and came off it, so maybe 10 years later, and realized they'd done a complete personality flip and actually... I mean, that, that I think is funny, by the way. Uh, I'll just mention this. I, again, I, I, I'm not a scientist. I'm certainly not an expert on the side effects and the consequence of taking the pill. But I find it funny, you know, uh, uh, somebody who's 14 and then you're 20-something, 10 years later, she said, so so 24. Um, how many of you who are not taking the pill, I don't know, even guys, how many of you were not taking the pill had a complete personality flip between 14 and 24? <laughs> I mean, is it really possible to go from age 14 to 24 and not have a dramatic change to one's personality? Pill or no pill, pharmacology or no pharmacology? Anyway, I, I, that's just, I find this is they, the kind of reasoning yeah, I, I, that people I, I engage in. One said, and I, quote, I, I thought I was bipolar, mm. but then it turned out actually it was just this psychoactive substance that I'd been, what, what were they doing to me? And this, is all, and, and, and this was all to the, to the purpose of rendering a woman receptive to what, what, what is, for the most part, loveless and sometimes extremely degrading um, sexual access. So the purpose of the pill, the reason it was developed, the reason it was given, the reason it was, you know, people were taking it, is, is so that it, women could be rendered, rendered as basically sex slaves, tools for sexual gratification of men, I assume. I mean, women have no say in this. They have no agency. They have no control over this. They take the pill. They immediately become, you know, open to sex with any male. And it necessitates loveless sex. She didn't say sex slaves. Yeah. All right. This is what she a said. Rendered a woman receptive. receptive. What, what, what is, for the most part, loveless and sometimes extremely degrading um, sexual... What does it mean to make a woman receptive to loveless, degrading sex? I, I mean, woman doesn't have any choice when she takes the pill. She's now committed to loveless and degrading sex. Is that outside of her ability to say no to? Sexual access. And, and it's, I struggle to see in what way that's in women's interests and, and given the great many other things that to my eye are downstream of the entry into that paradigm it seems to me that a good place to start would be a, the femi a feminist movement against the pill and for rewilding sex so against the pill she means here against contraception let's be clear rewilding sex what does rewilding sex means it means re endangering sex it means making sex now risky again Returning the danger to sex, returning the intimacy, and, and really the consequentiality to sex. And a great deal follows from an, an intentional reconnection of women's, op women's opting intentionally to reconnect with the fullness of our embodied nature. The fullness of your body's I, nature I is to always risk pregnancy when you have sex. That's what she wants. The danger because she's opposing sex. Now, who is this lady? Um, even though the conservatives are jumping all over this, uh, she is not a conservative. She is a feminist of the left, generally. Um, I have, her name is uh, Mary Harrington. 
a pretty famous, well-known feminist who's written quite a bit about this. This is, I don't know when this video is taken. You know, uh, uh, Twitter doesn't cite uh, a source on the video. You have to really uh, uh, dig to find it. But Mary Harrington is pretty, is, is very well-known for having these positions, for believing the sexual revolution was very, very bad for women, that the pill has been very, very bad for women. that, uh, you know, sexual, um, uh, generally contraception has been very bad for women. Uh, she had a famous essay she wrote, The Sexual Revolution Killed Feminism, which she views women as embracing sex as somehow demeaning them and therefore destroying the ambition that is feminism. I, I read this, I have to admit, I, I find it very difficult to understand what much of what she's talking about. Uh, you know, I'm not immersed in the literature over feminism. Uh, but look, this is exactly, you know, we're going to deal with exactly what she said. The context of what she said is, is pretty clear. She believes, whoops, let me get rid of this. She believes that what we need is a feminist movement against contraception to rewild sex. In other words, to make sex about reproduction again. To take out pleasure. Sex for pleasure. Now, uh, this is anti-life. It's anti-woman. It's also anti-male. It's anti-joy, happiness, life. Now, the fact that she's a, a feminist, it, it, it doesn't super surprise me that she's anti-life or anti-sex. I think a lot of feminists ultimately are anti-sex. So anyway, the Heritage Foundation writes, it quotes her, it says, quote, it seems to me that a good place to start would be a feminist movement against the pill and for returning consequentiality to sex. Consequentiality to sex. The fear of getting pregnant. I don't know, am I the only one who is pissed off at this, gets angry about this stuff? I get a sense that nobody seems to care. And Heritage Foundation continues to say, conservatives have to lead the way in restoring sex to its true purpose and end recreational sex and senseless use of birth control pills. Now, Heritage Foundation is very important, particularly today. The Heritage Foundation is basically Donald Trump's foundation right now. It is going to be the organization that will staff the entire Trump administration. They are basically, I, I get fundraising uh, letters from them. And basically, that's their pitch, their fundraising pitch. Their fundraising pitch is we are prepared. The, the first Trump administration, he didn't have the right people. We are prepared to staff the administration. We're hiring the people. We're, we're creating shadow departments. We will staff the Trump administration. We will have all the people. It will be fully staffed. We'll be able to... Hit the road running as soon as he gets elected. Scary, scary, scary stuff. Anyway, I posted, I, I did two posts. One, the theocrats are coming for your birth control, which I think is true. She might not be a theocrat, but they're using her, and they will use her. There's no question about that. And then I did a second post. Oh, and then... Uh, oh, so, yeah, let me backtrack. Okay, so Michael Schumer wrote, I called it yesterday, IVF frozen embryos is just the start. A feminist movement against the pill and recreational sex have, uh, ha you know, have sex to make babies. That's the only purpose of sex. That, Michael Schumer wrote that. So Chris Rufo wrote, now Chris Rufo is, I think, at the Manhattan Institute, uh, has gained a huge amount of celebrity and, and, to some extent, justifiably, Kusufo is like an anti-woke warrior. 
super anti-woke. He's written a book. He's got a book out uh, against woke. He also was instrumental in uh, uh, revealing the, um, the plagiarism uh, of the former president of Harvard University. And I think without him, she probably would have never uh, been forced to resign. So Chris Hofer has huge, huge conservative creds right now, huge Republican creds, he is in, and huge anti-woke creds. This is the anti-woke warrior right now. This is what he writes after Michael Shermer writes, I called it yesterday, IVF foes and, you know, and all of that about recreational sex and stuff. This is Chris Rufa. So what? The pill causes health problems for many women. Recreation of sex is a large part of the reason we have so many single mother households, which drives poverty, crime, and dysfunction. The point of sex is to create children. This is natural, normal, and good. No. The point of animal sex is to create children. The point of animal sex is to create children. The point of human sex is to affirm life, to affirm pleasure. The purpose of human sex is intimacy, connection. Human beings are cognitive beings. We don't have to reproduce. We can choose whether to reproduce or not. And modern technology has made that choice much more real. And what's amazing is, right, it, it put aside the pill has health problems for many women. Sure, women can choose. Some women don't have health problems. And there are other means of contraception that women can engage in that don't involve a pill. And I'm sure each one of those mechanisms, some women have side effects and don't like. That's why in the modern world in which we live, there is a plethora of choices for birth control. It's not the health problems that these people care about. They don't give a damn about the health of women. If they did, they'd be pro-abortion. What they care about is to get rid of, quote, recreational sex. But what is recreational sex? Is, 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 is recreational sex having sex before marriage any time? Because, look, sex before marriage clearly is not for procreation. Sex before marriage is purely for pleasure. Does that count? Or is it just people who sleep around, go to orgies, swap partners every week? Is that recreational sex? What about a young couple who like each other immensely and share a lot in common and want to have sex with one another? And they might get married and they might not get married. And then to say... Recreational sex is a large part of the reason we have so many single mother households, which drives poverty, crime, and dysfunction. Really? I mean, God, I mean, it's completely contradictory. Isn't the fact that we have single mother households because women are not using contraception? Isn't, isn't the reason we have single mother households because we're afraid to talk about sex. We're afraid to educate people about sex. Isn't it true that single mother households, by the way, are declining dramatically over the last 10 years from their peak in, in the early 2000s? And isn't it a failure of education? You could also argue that single mother households have to do with the welfare state, the disincentives to marry, all kinds of stuff. I don't think it's recreational sex. It is sex before marriage. That's true. And that's what he's really after. That's what they hate. 
And yet I have said, and I will say it again, and I will say it from the mountaintops as many times as necessary, although I don't know that I'm making a dent anyway, I believe strongly that getting married before you have sex is immoral. The not having sex before marriage is immoral. It's stupid. It's ignorant. And it's super risky. Everybody should have sex before marriage. They should use contraception not to get pregnant. I don't get Chris. He's a smart guy. I, I look to see, did he retract this? Did he... He hasn't commented on it since, at least that I could find, but no retraction. But what's stunning to me is how many people agree with Chris? There's so many people who came after my post when I criticized Chris. Surprised me that people who follow me think that sex should be restricted to married couples is bizarre. Well, you don't know, Rochelle says, the only happy couple I know, they had their first kiss at the wedding. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I'm, I, I'm surprised they didn't meet for the first time at the wedding because maybe we should just go back to arranged marriages. I'd be married... 41 years, and we did a lot more than kiss before the wedding. <sighs> Bizarre. I, I, you know, I, I sometimes think, are we really in the 21st century? Yeah, arranged marriages have lower divorce rates because people are more, uh, because people who agree to arranged marriages are going to be dogmatic about it, and they're going to suffer, emphasis on suffer, through it, whether it's good for them or not. And there's nothing wrong with divorce. Absolutely nothing wrong with divorce. I mean, I find this whole line of thinking about sex, about marriage, about children, it's 1220. It's, it's what's his name? Uh... uh Forget the guy's name who, who wanted to go back to 1220. What about couples who don't want to have kids? Should they not use the pill? Should they not use contraception and, and keep it dangerous? Keep it dangerous. I mean, this is so nakedly anti-pleasure, anti-individual, anti-joy, anti-happiness. Now, and this is, the, this is the, the argument they make, and both left and right make this, but this is the false dichotomy they create. You have two options. You can either wait until, and get, uh, until your wedding night and, and kiss then and then have sex, and only have sex for the purpose of having children, or you pretty much have sex with everybody. You have recreational sex. You sleep around with everybody. You're prom promiscuous. Those are the only two options. Because what conservatives do, primarily conservatives do this, but some people on the left too, and some people in the middle, is they assume people are animals. Animals in the animalistic sense. They don't have free will. They don't have reason. They're imbued with original sin. It, it's interesting. I'm reading this book in the founding of Christianity and the early years of Christianity. You know, I've been reading a lot about Christianity lately. And all the, 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 the fathers of Christianity, like the, the original thinkers, the original people like Augustine and, and others, Jerome and, and many others who... All the intellectuals who were at the foundation of capitalism were all obsessed with sex. They all despised sex, thought sex was unbelievably destructive. This is why 
uh, monasticism was so, and, and, and uh, uh, celibacy was so popular in the Christian church. Christianity, and it's, and it's had this impact on our culture, Christianity is fundamentally anti-pleasure, anti-sex, anti-individual happiness. And it's connected with original sin, the doctrine of original sin, which, which it turns out all arises from mistranslation of the New Testament. But anyway, um, it, it's just, it's just, it's pretty funny, actually, it, it, really sad, really, um, that you have a whole doctrine that is, in, if, I think, psych, psychologically really affected the church deeply, and the origins might just be a mistranslation. Um, So, yeah, but Christianity is a, you know, Christianity is a, a, a really, really, of, all, of religions, Christianity is a really bad religion. Um, and religion, is, of course, is already problematic just by being a religion. So uh, there's this false dichotomy. We're animalistic. And therefore, if we just leave people to be, leave them in their quote, natural state as human beings, they would just go around, you know, uh, sleeping with everybody. So we need to have moral law and note how, note how much of, of, of Christian moral law is dedicated to sex. We need to have moral law to a strict man so he doesn't do all the evil he would do if not for these restrictions. And he doesn't have to understand the restrictions. He just has to follow in their commandments. He has to follow them as the law. It is his duty. So you're either promiscuous or you are, you can only have sex with, in marriage and, only, and even then just to have children. Um, I mean, this is cultural barbarism in its worst form. Uh, yes, many people behave irresponsibly with regard to sex. It's terrible. But people behave irresponsibly with regard to a lot of things in life. What we need to teach them is reason, to be rational. What we need them, what we need to teach them is to think, to be independent, to make choices, to be selfish. What we need to teach them is to be selfish, to think about their own long-term well-being. And we shouldn't try to replace the individual's thinking with commandments, with crazy, crazy rules that limit the joy in life. I mean, sex is, is beautiful. It's amazing. And if you were only going to do it when you were going to have children, you would only do it like three, four, five, six, seven times in your life. And that's crazy. You know, once, twice a week. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're younger, even more often. So it's completely insane. Shouldn't be promiscuous, but you should have sex. You shouldn't be promiscuous in anything in life. You shouldn't be promiscuous in your friendships. You shouldn't be promiscuous in, the, in your job. You shouldn't like flip jobs every three weeks, you should be thoughtful. Nobody, uh, if, you, if you do away with contraceptions, you can't have sex with your spouse for pleasure. But what about not with your spouse for pleasure? What's wrong with having sex not with your spouse for pleasure? If you gain value from it, without being promiscuous. You see, you're, you, you know, some of you are falling into the same nonsense. The same nonsense. 
You're going to quote the Bible on me? <laughs> Michelle is quoting the Bible. This is the Bible. The Bible that tells the story of David, who had many wives, and who, in one of the final chapters, in the section about David, he is the beginning of the chapter is David waking up with two young women in his bed with him to keep him, quote, warm. There is no conservative perspective. The conservative perspective is that we are inherently evil, that we're inherently irrational, that we are inherently cannot control our urges. The conservative perspective is, the, cons the conservative perspective is, particularly the Christian perspective, is that we're inherently evil, and therefore we must put, be chained. We must be restricted. We must be bound by rules and laws and, and regulations to behave in the way the philosopher kings have decided is appropriate for us to behave. The reality is the Bible doesn't say anything. The Bible says whatever you want it to say. There's stuff in the Bible for everybody. I can find justifications for my arguments in the Bible, and I'm sure all of you can find justifications for your arguments in the Bible as well. It is a meaningless document in that sense. There's no truth in the Bible. There's no knowledge in the Bible. And the conservatives don't look to the Bible to find their truth and their knowledge. They make it up. They make it up for the for based on their perspective on human nature. It, it, it's fascinating. You know, evangelicals used to be um, used to be pro-abortion. Then they flipped to be anti-abortion. The um, Christians used to hold all kinds of ideas. And they changed over time. All kinds of ideas change all the time. And, and if you look at the uh, Christian church, it evolves based on the needs of the powerful, not based on so-called truth or commitment to some old documents. They find what they want in the old documents to justify what they want to do anyway for the purposes of power. Um, but look, uh, there is a third alternative to promiscuity versus following uh, anti-life rules, anti-pleasure, anti-sex rules, and that is to enjoy sex responsibly, to have sex with the people, with people that you value, that you share something with. Don't be promiscuous, but don't be sex with one person in your entire life only after marriage, which is ignorant and silly. The attack on contraception is an attack on human life. And it's not an attack just on women, men, beware. An attack on abortion is an attack on human life. It's an attack on women, but it's an attack on all of our lives, on our independence, on our reasoning mind, on our own individual judgment. Having children is super important, super important. And therefore, one should be sure that one wants them, and one should have every opportunity to change one's mind about them. Sex, marriage, is so important. It's such a big commitment that you better know that you're, gonna, that you're going to enjoy the sex with the person you're going to spend maybe the rest of your life with. You want to know that you, when you're intimate like that, that you respond in a way that is fulfilling. You better, when you marry somebody and make the kind of commitments that people make in their vows, you better know that this person is the right person for you. And to take a massive part of human life, sex, and marriage, which is sex, and as a consequence, and, and, and say, well, I'm not going to know about them in that realm, 
until after the wedding. What if after the wedding you discover you hate having sex with him? What if after the wedding you discover that the, 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 there's no intimacy between you and him or him and you or whatever? It's too late. It is ignorant and stupid and irrational not to have sex before the wedding. And primitive. And, <laughs> and of course, why? <laughs> why wait? <laughs> what is the reason? There's no rationale. There's no logic to it. It's all about what? It's all about what? If you're not going to marry, if you know you're going to marry the person, why would you not have sex before? I mean, even if you don't know you're going to marry them, why would you not have sex before? Anyway, it, we live in 2024, and it's unbelievable to me that we have to have these conversations. It's unbelievable to me that we have to have these conversations in 2024. How uh, the ignorance that people have of human psychology, of human sexuality, of human life, and. Uh, you know, the people still want, the people still want, I mean, this is the problem. The problem is that they live, people live unfulfilled lives. They buy into the, consu uh, the conservative view of, um, they buy into the conservative view of human nature. They apply it to themselves. And therefore, they, they can't imagine a, a healthy sexual relationship uh, that is not bounded by contract, which is a marriage. All marriage is a contract. They can't imagine having sex with more than one person, with multiple people over time, or all at once, anyway, um, in a responsible way. What they really motivated for is hatred. Hatred of human reason, hatred of human choice, hatred of human happiness, hatred of human happiness. I mean, just read Augustine, Augustine, read Augustine, really the most important intellectual, certainly in the early church, and his hatred for life. <laughs> 